Miss Lyles was my third grade teacher at All Saints School, and she was the first person to teach us black history. So when I first learned about the four little girls uh, who integrated public schools, um, Miss Lyles wrote on the board, November 14th, 1960, and she drew a line. And she said that was the day that New Orleans had school integration enacted and enforced. And then she said the girls' names, and of course she started with Ruby Bridges, Fiona Tate, Tessie, Prevost, Gail Etienne. I remember learning what they had to go through. So what they did was they integrated the elementary school level first. And so I know that McDonough, the, at McDonough 19, it became predominantly black after a year and a half. White flight took place and the white kids left. But after McDonough 19 became predominantly black, the idea was and the plan was to integrate. And so Leona, Tessie, and Gail went to T.J. Sims with a few other African-American students. But the thing that was different about T.J. Sims is that there were no U.S. Marshals. The girls didn't have any protection. And they went through a hell that no child, when I think about what they went through there, no, no child at seven years old, eight years old, should have ever endured that. But um, it happened. And I hope that one day their story of what really happened there finally gets some light because they deserve to have that. Leona joined Ruby at William France in fourth grade. And then when the girls got old enough to, in, to go to junior high school, that's when they were ready to integrate the junior high school level. I came back home in 2017. My mom calls and says, have you gone over to sit with, T. Le with your T. Leona? And I said, um, what do you mean? You want me to go sit with her? She says, I told you that Leona got a big project and you need to go over there and sit with her and talk to her about it to see how you can help her. So I went over and uh, sat with T. Leona and she was just telling me at the little uh, house museum she runs called the Lower Ninth Ward Living Museum. Well, we get in her little car and we drive around the corner to the McDonough 19 uh, school building that was boarded up before Katrina. And then she stops the car and said, I won't buy this building. And they need schools and they need, you know, they need a place where they can learn their black history and they can know what happened here. And I'm sitting there like, okay. Like I said, that's a big building. I think that's going to take a lot of money. She said, I, I, I just need to get to the school board, get them to, to, to get me this building because I need the school board to, to, to move. And so that's when I called Cindy Wynn. And I said, Cindy, can you help my T. Leona get that school building? Because she has the developers to help her make it a reality. And so Cindy Wynn got in there and started working with her. And she calls her Mama Leona. And uh, she helped her and Mayor Latoria Cantrell helped her, and the city council supported it. And before you know it, the school board turned around and they helped her to actually acquire the building. And then from there comes the fundraising. And so that's when I came up with the New Orleans Four Legacy Project. We were able to at least produce the 60th anniversary Proclamation Day ceremony at Gallier Hall. They received the key to the city 60 years later from Mayor Latoya Cantrell. And they also, the, the city council has proclaimed no, November 14th, New Orleans for a day. Based on this project now, that's a multi-million dollar uh, building project. And so she's realizing the dream of having 25 deeply affordable apartments on the top two floors. And then the bottom floor is going to be uh, the museum exhibit. It's an interpretive center, you know, and uh, that's where the history of desegregation, the full account, and the people who moved with them.
the NOLA resistance movement of the 60s and 70s. That history is going to live on those walls. You know, Bob Marley says it best. If you don't know your history, then you don't know where you're coming from. And if you don't know where you're coming from, where are you going? That's the power. And it's, that's why it's important for us to tell these full stories.